Hello and welcome to the D Pod from the D Pad live video cast. I'm your host, Nick. This is episode 41, and we've got a huge, huge, huge video cast for you today. This one's going to go at least 16 hours. So oh, God. <laughs> go get yourself a snacky cake for this one. Uh, <laughs> Sharon's over there. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Nick. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. I've <laughs> never been better. Excellent. Also with us this week, our usual cast of characters, Other Nick. Hello. Hello. We got to come up with a better nickname. <laughs> We need to call you, like, Killer or something. (laughs) Killer (laughs) T-Bone. I kind of like other Nick. It's it's very, like, (laughs) humble. Unfortunately, we use it in everyday conversation. Like, oh, yeah, I was talking to other Nick, and he said... (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that's not not very... We need need a better one. (laughs) Yeah, we do. Uh, And also, of course, with us is Jeremy, rounding out our cast. Hi, Jeremy. Hi. I, I... I'm kind of sad there's no other Jeremy. <laughs> I'll take it. We could come up with a new nickname for you, like maybe Tiny or, or I don't know. <laughs> Bubba. Bubba. <laughs> Bubba. Bubba Jeremy. Well, there is no other Jeremy, so you can just be Jeremy Prime. Oh, yeah. uh, there you are. <laughs> That's a good one. I always wanted like a really good nickname. Really? Yeah. <laughs> no? I don't know. I, I never wanted a nickname. I always had terrible. My nickname in uh, high school was Bullwinkle because I am tall and have an overbite. <laughs> <laughs> That's mean. Yeah, a, it wasn't uh, wasn't a nice nickname. <laughs> like I want a cool, like badass sounding nickname, like like Scar McKnife. <laughs> <laughs> when I was in high school. Um, my name doesn't really shorten to anything, and so a bunch of a bunch of girls started calling me Cher, which inevitably broke out, made uh, people break out into Cher songs, and I oh, no. despised it so much. Did you want to turn back time? No, no. And <laughs> I would every time someone would say it, I'd be like, "No, please don't call me that." And eventually, it um, I don't know, it progressed or it sort of morphed into being called Shay, which has nothing to do with Sharon at all. <laughs> So, yeah, that, those were the two failed attempt of nicknames on my name. Oh, well. we'll get you a new one by the next no, podcast. I don't need a nickname. We'll just we'll edit it in right there where it says Sharon, and we'll put in, you know, the uh, the, the Deathbringer. <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> since I um, since I started using my gamer tag years and years ago, which my gamer tag is Maya Sharona, I get called Maya a lot online, like not in person, but in online terms. People will be like, "Hey, Maya," I'm like, "No." It's Sharon. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> That's wrong. Oh, well. Yeah. So, guys, we have a really, really big podcast. So, why don't we talk about some video games, huh? Yeah, I like, yeah, I like those video games. <laughs> we, have, uh, we have so many video games to talk about this week. So, we're going to get right into it. After the Excite Bike music plays, of course. Oh, I love that music. Who wants to go first this week? Any takers? Anyone? Anyone? I'll go first. Okay, that's cool. Nick, what have you been playing this week? Um, I've been playing a bunch of stuff. Uh, I played. You're always uh, playing a bunch of stuff. <laughs> uh, Not that there's played... anything wrong with that. What's that? <laughs> You're always playing a bunch of stuff. Uh, well, yeah. That's good though. I, I play. I play video games. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gunpoint. Gunpoint. One of the things I've been playing. Uh, played it all the way through it this week. Uh, and it was great. Um, Gunpoint, if, uh, people haven't heard of it, is a, uh, it's a, it's an indie game made by, uh, Tom Francis, who is a, a writer for PC Gamer. Okay. Um, and this is the first game he made. He's been working on it in his spare time for the last three years. Wow. Uh, he made it in Game Maker. Um, and it's, uh, it's a stealth puzzle game, sort of. <laughs> it's got like little bits of action in it, but the action isn't really the focus. Uh, the focus is, um, basically rewiring the entire level to get to your objective, uh, without 
being shot. <laughs> uh, so the, the guards, I, I say there isn't a whole lot of action in it because when you get seen in this game by the patrolling guards, they just shoot you on sight and you die in one hit. So it really comes down to being a puzzle game, not really a, oh, like that, huh? You just got yeah. shot. Yep. Congratulations, you're dead. <laughs> uh, but when you, when you do die, it, uh, it saves like a ridiculous amount of auto saves. Um, and you can restart sometimes from like two or three seconds ago. It's really good about auto saving like all the time, pretty much for every major new interaction you do. So you never really lose much of any progress at all. Um, but, uh, the, yeah, the game is, it's, it's really good. Uh, looks complicated at first sight. It, it does. Uh, and this, uh, for people watching the video cast, this is actually a level that's somewhat deep into the game. Uh, so this one's, a uh, um, given us the sneak peek <laughs> well th this one's you know more complicated than than <laughs> it gets later on this one is actually probably one of the most puzzly ones uh th this one as you can see i had some trouble with <laughs> <laughs> i keep getting shot over and over and over again uh and like the only thing you can do is you can pounce on dudes and uh um punch them and knock them out but that's like the only Later on, you can get a gun, but when you shoot the gun, uh, everyone a, freaks out. I, I assume. Yeah, everyone freaks out, and uh, a timer starts counting down. And that timer, uh, when that timer reaches zero, the police show up, just, and you're, they you're just screwed. show up and just. That's it. Haul you off to jail. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, they show up and they like guard the um the exit to the level you have to exit every level by going into the subway uh and these guards you, don't let you, up huh you, they got yeah. eagle eye they're yeah they're really good <laughs> i imagine I mean, they're also kind of <laughs> dumb i imagine their their lives must be very empty because all they do is pace <laughs> like with their gun held out in front of them like what yeah. a life to live <laughs> it's like, I'm just going to sit here pacing, and I'm going to shoot something eventually. I don't know what. And then they see you, and you're dead. Yep. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah, the, the crux of the game is wiring things to different things. And they're... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's kind of a hard game to explain. Um, but everything is color-coded, and uh, so... Um, like again, in the video here, you can see that I'm wiring these, uh, these guys are walking through, uh, these guards here are walking through motion detectors. And when they walk through the motion detectors, it sets off the thing that I'm connecting it to. So I'm waiting for this other guard to go through this door. And then that guy walks through the motion detector. And then I trapped that guard in that door there. Gotcha. Cool. So now he's he's just pacing back and forth in that little room I stuck him in, and I turned off the the touchpad for him to open the door so he can't get out of there. It reminds me of Mousetrap. You ever play Mousetrap for like the Atari? <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about the board game. <laughs> well, no, not the board game. Like there's an old uh, old Atari like ColecoVision, probably an arcade game too. Mousetrap, where you get the uh, like you can control doors to to uh trap the cats in an otherwise Pac-Man like maze but uh like the whole ob objective is to trap things so you can move around the maze easier i guess it's a it's a pretty loose connection very loose um i never played mouse trap but yeah i could see where you're coming from uh with that uh it's the the levels are there's not a whole lot of really hard ones um, uh, but the, like the difficulty, if you want to really challenge yourself more, uh, you get rated at the end of the level. Um, so you can do, try to do speed runs and you get, uh, upgrades and stuff. Uh, you get both money and skill points and I like money. Uh, 
So, but also this game has actually a genuinely great story. Uh, in the, in the story, the beginning of this game starts off with the, the main character, um, who is a freelance spy testing out a new gadget he just bought that are, uh, I think they're called leapfrog pants or something <laughs> like that. And he, he puts them on and, uh, it, uh, they misfire and it launches him through his window into the building next door. Uh, okay. and right after that happens, someone, you hear someone get shot and then the, a dead body lands right next to him. <laughs> uh, and it's, it's all caught on security camera. So you have to like go, uh, clear your name by the first like five missions are going around and deleting the security camera footage from like all the backups, uh, around town. And then it goes from there and it turns into this really like really complicated web of ink. Well, not, I don't know, not really complicated, but complicated enough to be interesting, like web of intrigue of like this person killed that person because blackmail and money. And it, it's all like corporate espionage. And, um, the butler there's a, uh, it was the butler. <laughs> there's Sorry, a, I just ruined that game for you. Oh, <laughs> with a <the> candlestick. <laughs> Mr. Colonel Mustard. <laughs> and with a candlestick in the library. Uh, be- between missions, you get these really great and really well written and like laugh out loud hilarious uh, little adventure game uh, like conversation trees. Uh, I don't know how much. If anything, that really impacts the story, but they're still ridiculously fun and funny. Um, but yeah, that's Gunpoint. I definitely recommend it. Yeah, it seems to be really highly regarded right now. Yeah. Like it's making waves, which is great. And I think I just took a peek and whether you get it through Steam, I think it's just on Windows right now, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So whether you get it through Steam or you get it through the, the, uh, website, uh, there's different editions, and I think one of the editions said that it has like a making of, which are always really interesting. Yeah. And soundtrack and all that kind of stuff. So it's definitely making waves. People are the uh, it. the most expensive of the like the the highest of those editions. I think it's like twenty five bucks, and it includes like a gun. <laughs> <laughs> no. It- <laughs> It includes like, I don't, I don't know how, like a whole, at least 15 or more different prototypes. Oh, wow. So you see the game at different stages of its development. That's really cool. Uh, and it includes commentary on all of them. And yeah, it's, it's really cool. Uh, also the music is great. Like kind of jazzy. It's, uh, jazzy with a little bit of electronic mixed in, you know, like very much fits the tone of sneaking around and doing all this this kind of stuff. Cool. We will uh, have to check that out. But uh yeah, so the the next game I've been playing uh is uh I've been playing a lot Marvel Heroes. Oh yeah, I'm interested that came for this. <laughs> that? I said I'm interested to see this. I yeah. About- I um so, I don't know if I could objectively call this a good game. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. You've been playing this but, for but a that... while, right? Yeah, I played the like a couple of the open beta weekends. Uh, and I think I even talked about this. on. on yeah, Wednesday. I think you did. Is that the thing? Yeah, <laughs> it is the thing, yeah. It's the thing. It's one of the three characters. Uh, and also one of my favorite superheroes, so <laughs> he's a no-brainer. Free. Like, what, what designates the thing as free? Like, is he just... Uh, is he not cool enough to be paid? <laughs> no one wants to play. Well, they have thing. to. They have to pick a number of of characters for you to be able to access. Yeah, for why nothing. can't the thing ever get a freaking break? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, poor guy. I don't know. Fantastic Four kinda isn't the most popular mm. uh, of Marvel. Ensemble. <laughs> even though I totally love them, that like that's what got me into comics back in the day. My dad bought me a. A bunch of, like, a stack of old Fantastic Four comics from a garage sale. Uh, and I've always loved them ever since. Um, 
But uh, anyways. So yeah, we've talked about this game on this podcast before, and it seemed, if I recall, the last time uh, you were pretty gung ho about it. Yeah, no, I'm I'm still really gung ho about it, but it, like I recognize that it is super personal. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Mm-hmm. Like it. This is a really well made, but otherwise pretty standard Diablo like action RPG. Hmm. Uh, there is kind of the only thing that really sets this game apart at all is the Marvel skin. Well, what, what do you mean by personal? If I can step back for a second. Well, I just mean, okay, basically what I mean is this is a genre that I'm a sucker for with uh, a, a skin or a theme to the game that I have loved since I've, since childhood. Right. You know what so I mean? not necessarily a mass appeal. It's personal right. to you because you love Marvel. I love Marvel oh, and I, I love action RPGs. As far so, as the content, like the Mar, like being Marvel, I think that would be more accessible and more uh, attract more people than, let's say, a Di- Diablo universe would. <laughs> Is eleven that, million people not enough for you? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, like you know, some people just might be so against Diablo, but be more open to play i understand but i also understand what nick is saying is that um if you don't have ties to this type of gameplay or the characters themselves that the game itself is not anything outstanding right uh if if you don't already like action rpgs and marvel i don't know that i could recommend this game (laughs) really you know what i mean Hmm. Uh, but for me personally it's like a perfect uh well okay so this this game for me is uh for people that watch um player one loves player two this game for me is star trek games for matt <laughs> basically <laughs> excellent uh, comparison and matt smiles across the room as he's playing star trek online right now so <laughs> this game is my star trek online <laughs> uh in that like i I would not begrudge anybody for not being into this game, but I am super into it <laughs> <laughs> because it it is just so much fun. Like, it makes a huge difference to me that I am smacking dudes around as the ever-loving blue-eyed thing <laughs> uh, instead of generic barbarian number 267, you know right. what I mean? Yep. Uh and, uh, like, so much so, I enjoyed this so much that the other night, um, a buddy of mine came over that doesn't play video games at all, except for Marvel video games, mm-hmm. because he is even a bigger Marvel fan than I am. And, uh, so whenever, like, anything new Marvel comes out, I use it as an excuse to get him to play some games with me. <laughs> uh, so he came over last night and we had a little LAN party. And cool. uh, I wanted to start a new character, so I ended up plunking 20 bucks on it to buy Spider-Man. Ooh. Uh, and uh, that was a good choice because Spider-Man is super fun. Because <laughs> I love Spider-Man. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. They just nail bucks. the characters perfectly. Damn. 20 bucks for one character? Well, Is that yeah, how it works? But, well, I mean, the characters aren't, they're not all 20 bucks. Okay. Spider-Man is the most popular Marvel hero, yeah, so I guess he's got a box. He's top in. shelf. <laughs> top sh- Iron Man, top yeah. shelf superhero. <laughs> <laughs> I'm this interested is a, to see Iron Man. Is he is he paid? You have to buy yeah, him. Yeah, he's paid. You have to buy him. Also, he's also twenty bucks. Uh, oh. And uh, who else? Uh, Deadpool is twenty bucks. <laughs> so yeah, everybody that's all, popular. <laughs> everybody that's popular, but like, um. Uh, Black Widow, six bucks. <laughs> right. <laughs> no one wants to really play the super powered, or non super powered lady who's only the most, you know, the only the best spy in the entire world. <laughs> but it's power, so. She or doesn't like, have like super stretchy limbs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or like laser eyes. How much um, is Cyclops? Like, I think, uh, Cyclops, I think is like, Nine dollars. They're all over the place. All over the place with these prices. Yeah. Somebody else, like other other heroes, are like thirteen or fourteen. Mm. 
Um, are, there must be like one guy who decides the prices. Like they just stick a comic book nerd in a room and they say, "Well, you know, Cyclops is actually pretty cool." No, I um, think it's probably more statistic and analysis <laughs> than that. Yeah. <laughs> Like the number uh, of issues sold per, I don't know. <laughs> Black well, they, Widow, worst comic book character ever. Oh no! In the in the beta, um, they gave everyone like the equivalent of like fifty bucks in okay. in game currency to just spend for free. So I bet they just graphed what everyone bought in the beta and said, "Hey, everyone's playing Spider Man, Deadpool." And Iron Man, so let's make those guys twenty bucks. And there's, there's one guy who's playing the thing, so let's just make it free. Uh, yeah, let's make him free. <laughs> uh, but I mean, like the so basically how the the money works for the game is when you first start it, the first time you play it, you get a choice of uh, five different heroes. There's Thing, Scarlet Witch, Hawkeye, Daredevil, and Storm. That you can choose for free. Mm. Uh, and then after you finish the first chapter, you will also get, or uh, not the first chapter, I think it's just the prologue. You'll also get, uh, as a quest reward, another random drop of one of those five as well. Oh, okay. So I, I picked Thing as the dude I started with, and then I got a random drop of Storm. Huh. Uh, but I don't huh. really care. Uh, Storm is not, you know, one of my favorite characters or anything. So, oh, poor Storm. <laughs> uh, but uh, so I, I, uh, but she seems fun to play. My my buddy that I was playing with last night was playing Storm, and and he was having, he seemed to be having a good time zapping people with lightning and blowing around, blowing them around with gusts of wind and stuff. Uh, Screw Spider Man. It's all about Storm. <laughs> I don't know. She's uh, okay. Okay. But yeah, so, you know, I, I had, I've already played this both in beta and out of beta for, uh, let's see what Steam tells me. I've, Couple I've, of. how long I've played this. I, I've, I've already played it a lot. <laughs> Tens so, of hours. Uh, I, I figured that 20 bucks. Yeah, I've got 10 hours played on okay. it, according to Steam. So I figured, you know, 20 bucks. Yeah, whatever. For 10 hours and then, Plus, I'm sure I'm going to be playing this game quite a lot still after mm -hmm. this. So. Well, then it's um, it'll, it might end up as another perennial like Torchlight Two. Yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah. So, guys, which one have we played this week? Was it Marvel or Torchlight? <laughs> <laughs> Man, um, I almost jumped into Torchlight this week. It was so hard not to. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, tangent. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah, actually, that's kind of i almost feel a little bad because i'm playing this game and i'm like man i should just be playing torchlight torchlight <laughs> is a better game i don't have a torchlight video queued <laughs> that's okay and and runic uh you know runic deserves the well i guess i already bought it but you know what i mean <laughs> the accolades uh, but right. uh yeah i'm i'm gonna keep playing this game for a while <laughs> Cool. I'm, I'm sure it will show up on our uh, podcast again. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I'll, I'll be showing off like new costumes that I found or All something. Your or, epic purples, new Spider Mans. Yeah, dude. Okay, yeah. So they they totally <laughs> get you too. Like I I was we were playing it last night and we ran across another dude playing Spider Man and he had. Spider Man like black suit symbiote costume. Uh, and oh boy. It made all of his web powers. Like there's a there's a power where he like coats the ground with web nice. and it makes everything slow down and that power was all it changed the color of that. It was all black and bubbly and it looks so cool. <laughs> and I'm like, I want that I want that costume. <laughs> That's very cool. Yeah. So all right, next game i have been playing is i finished uh metro last light oh you finished it yeah hooray uh, and it was good <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying to remember I, uh, what your opinion was of that game the first time my opinion the first time was i was um tired of shooters hmm. and i'm still tired of shooters <laughs> And I think this is going to be the last shooter I'm going to play for a while. Hmm. At um, least until the next year. 
Call of Duty Ghosts. There you go. Nah. Nah. <laughs> now, my understanding is that uh, Last Light has sold better than uh, 2033 sold. Yeah, I mean, I don't... That makes sense to me. Yeah. It, it is a better game than, you know, in the sort of more... It's got way more polish and um, just way more money and time thrown at it, obviously, than 2033 did. Uh and because of that, you know, it's also going to be more um, populist and stuff. Right. Uh, but also, I think, and this is a weird thing to ding a game for, I guess, but it also doesn't have as much of the spirit that the first one had. Right. If if you know what I mean. Like, the first one was like a, I think I probably already made this uh, analogy last time I talked about this game, but. The first one was like a um a good like punk rock album. Right. That was recorded in a garage and it's like this is not perfect but man it has so much energy and spirit and these guys just obviously made this game that they wanted to make despite not having the budget and the time and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And then this one they had the budget and the time. So this one is like your your favorite punk band uh Sell you know out. gets signed on to a major label and then makes a really good but more polished and populist well, you know pop punk man, right. what, a, what a bunch of sellouts man. totally i was totally into metro before other people were into metro <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i guess that does sound pretty awful and hipster <laughs> <made a> <laughs> no but i mean that's not i mean that's not really my point yeah, I know. Um, I'm just making a stupid joke. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, having concluded it now, was it a satisfying conclusion? Do you feel like, you know... Did you save the sewers? <laughs> well, no. Uh, Are the sewers safe for all of mankind? I don't, I don't mean that. I just mean, do you feel like it needs to finish out in a new game? Or do you feel like, yeah, that's good. You know, tap your hands together. Thanks. Thanks for the... <laughs> Thanks it's, for that. It's Thanks for good all the for me. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think the conclusion was particularly satisfying. Okay. <laughs> Gotta keep it open for the trilogy sequel. <laughs> well, no, it was more like, that was just a weird ending. Okay. That, you know. Metro 3, last, last light. So the, the, the thing that I, um, the things that I like about this game are not the plot of the game, really. Like the plot of the game turns out to be, this uh story of basically war brewing between these factions that people have brought with them into the metro uh so it's like there's there's nazis there's a new reich down there and then there's the, the communist reds and then there's like the free people of the metro um and uh that um essentially it's just about Aliens. A war between those three factions. All I see is aliens. Is yeah, this like well, the Zerg faction or something? No, these are... <laughs> the, this is... Yeah, I mean, the, the stuff on the screen right now for the video cast is uh, not very uh, exemplary of Alien. what we're talking about here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this section goes on a little too long in this video. But anyways... Uh, this is the kind of stuff that interested me more, actually, was the more post-apocalyptic stuff. Uh, actually, now that I think about it, this video that I provided is pretty much all mutants. Oh, well, that's uh, fine. And not dudes, but it turns into, like, all shooting dudes later on in the game. Uh, as the storyline gets less about you traveling through the metro and more about you trying to stop this war from happening. Uh, and in that regard, it takes the thing that I thought makes it unique and issues all of that and then just says, yeah, this is just another war story. Boring. Yeah. Uh, but there is, I am ultimately, I'm glad I played it and I'm glad I finished the whole thing. Um, because there are some really fantastic mechanics in the game, the charging up the flashlight and the 
uh, the gas mask stuff and all, you know, all that stuff is great. That amazing and, uh, flashlight technology. <laughs> so bringing that next gen, next gen flashlight. There's, uh, there's also some really fantastic, really creepy moments in this game, which I did, did not realize was going to be in here at all. Um, unfortunately, most of those are kind of optional. Uh, but I'm glad they're in there and I'm glad that I'm glad I found them because I, I love creepy, scary stuff. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. I have no desire to play this game. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't look like something I'd be into at all. It's very, very colorless to me, but maybe I'm just colorblind. You also, that changes you also a little hate bit. shooters though. So like, <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't know if hate is the right word, but I don't, it just, to me, I, I don't see a lot standing out to me, I guess. That uh, that changes a little bit on the surface. Uh, if you skip the video ahead a little bit more, um, there's a uh, a section where I'm on the surface in Moscow, in like crumbled Moscow, and uh, <laughs> that that bit's pretty good because you know there's like stuff overgrown everywhere and and crazy mutated monsters and stuff. But uh, and actually, this bit. This is the first time you get to the surface in a really large area that they just sort of let you. The whole game is very, very linear, but there are a couple of these spots that are like very wide linear. Like Half-Life yeah. 2 style, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole game, actually, I kind of affectionately refer to this game as Russian Half-Life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, looks like you're out of the sewers. Yeah. Uh, looks, and it, it looks this, pretty. <laughs> this was the first time, uh, like I decided that, ah, maybe there's something to this game. This, this section was pretty great here. Yeah. I don't think it looks half bad, to be honest, but yeah. I mean, I can see being burnt out on shooters and this not being one that would stand above the others, but at the same time, it doesn't look like a terrible experience. <laughs> Right. Yeah. It's a really good game. And if you're not super burnt out like shooter, uh, uh, by shooters like me, I, you should totally go play this game. Hmm. But I'm taking a, after this game was my limit for a while. <laughs> I'm taking a break from shooters. <laughs> Take now. the summer off. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to play some RPGs and, and adventure games for a while. Oh, more Dragon Quest. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I really need to get back to Dragon Quest. <laughs> Uh, uh, anyway, so that, then that brings me to the last game I played, which really is a thing, reason to talk about Steam trading cards. <laughs> oh, right. I forgot uh, all about that stuff. So they've been adding more and more games to the Steam trading card beta. Um, one of the games they added last week was, uh, Runner 2 Future Legend of Rhythm Alien. It's part of the, <laughs> part of the Bit Trip series, correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, nice short title for that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's the sequel to probably my favorite and probably the best of the Bit Trip series, Bit Trip Runner. Uh, and, uh, I bought this game when it first came out and was really terrible at it and didn't really play it a whole lot. And I think there was some other like stuff. The first one, I imagine it's super hard. Yeah, it's really hard. <laughs> and there's even more going on in this one, uh, than the first one. Seems like this but, would be a good speedrun game. <laughs> well, I mean, not really. You can't really speedrun it because it goes at the same pace for everybody. Ah, uh, right? I gotcha. Uh, the running is automatic. It's um the extra challenge comes in score attacks, like making sure you collect all the pieces of gold. And uh. Uh, like one of the things in this game that they added from the first is there is a a checkpoint in the middle of every level now um, that you can go through to, you know, make it easier to get through the level, or you can jump over the checkpoint to get a huge score boost. But if you die, you go all the way back to the Ooh. beginning of the level. Risk, Risk versus, versus reward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's a really great game. Um, it's probably one of the most solid games of its type. Yeah. Uh, I mean, basically, if, if anyone has ever played one of these games, you basically either, you either duck or you jump or kick, I think. There's usually a kick as well. 
Yeah. And depending well, on... this game has a ton of different actions, and they keep adding more and more as the game Great. goes on. And basically, There's... the whole objective is just to hit the right button at the right time. Is what it comes down to at its at its absolute root. Yep. And there's a bit of uh there's a bit of rhythm aspect to this game too, um, in that there is a song and if you're hitting it everything uh if you're doing all the jumps at the right moment and stuff, it makes different tones for the different things and it will add to the song that's playing in the background. Oh, that's cool. I like that sort of stuff. Yeah. And it's really good. And when you pick up the like the upgrade things, the like those big red squares, uh it adds more to the song, like it'll add background drums or it'll add a new instrument. So the song builds as you play through a level also. Um, Watching people play the Bit Trip games is very nerve-wracking to me. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like watching someone play the Turbo Tunnel in Battletoads. That's basically <laughs> what it comes down to. Turbo Tunnel. It's like you, you, you know that, that the mess up is coming, but you can't say when. Yeah. And it, it makes my brain want to scream. <laughs> I would be so, very yeah. mad if I played this game. Just <laughs> throwing that out. This is well, not yeah, my type of game. I, I was very mad when I first played <laughs> the game and never really played it very much. But then they add Steam trading cards to it. Oh, right. <laughs> so that was a good incentive for me to pick this game up again and start playing it. Uh, and... Uh, I, uh, so I've been going through and collecting a lot of Steam trading cards, but I have not been using them for their intended purpose because oh. this week I also found out that along with the Steam trading cards, they added a community market, which is something about this whole thing that I don't think has been talked about very much. I'm making mad cash? Is it a market uh, specifically for the cards or is it in general? Um, it's, it's in general and like, it, it seems like any game that wants to support it can support it. The only games that do right now, I'm pretty sure are, um, well, the Steam trading cards and Team Fortress 2 items. Um, and even then only a handful of Team Fortress 2 items. Dota 2 also has. Oh yeah, Dota 2. I, I sold an item in Dota for 50 bucks uh, a couple weeks ago. Oh, crap. <laughs> I am in the wrong business. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I've made like 30 bucks. Wow. Yeah. Selling all like both the cards because I don't you know I don't care about the cards that much they they get you a little badge in your Steam profile and whatever <laughs> I would rather have the I would I I bought Gunpoint and I bought Spider Man in Marvel Heroes with money that I made from selling Steam trading cards. Well, now that's cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, that it really. It's cool, but it's also it's really weird. Uh, at least <laughs> you're, you're getting in that. on that market while it exists, because I have a feeling yeah. that's not going to uh, not going to stick. Maybe either that, or the market will become so flooded with cards that the prices will all go way down. Or it's harder to get the cards. Maybe I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Well, you'd be surprised. Like a lot of the items in in Dota sell for like. Uh, a couple cents, like hmm. one, two, three cents. But over time, just as you accumulate them, you can make a couple bucks in like, you know, a couple weeks. And then there you go. That's a little bit towards your next game. Yeah, yeah so exactly. It, it's never going to be a market where it's like humongous amounts of money being spent. I mean, there are exceptions. Like I sold that item for 50 bucks, but it's it's very rare and it's a novelty item. So people will always want like, like Nick said, something on their Steam profile, like a badge or like, Stuff you wouldn't buy, somebody is going to buy. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. just how it works. There's a market for everything, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and I had a, I had a lot of, cause I've played Team Fortress 2 since that game has been out originally. Uh, so I have a lot of random shit in my Team Fortress 2. Uh, well, I had a lot of random shit in my Team Fortress 2 library that I'd never used ever because I love that game. But like, there's just certain classes I'm never going to play very much. Uh, so I got rid of a bunch of Team Fortress Two stuff that I've collected, you know, over the for years. Uh, and I sold like between the cards and the TF2 items, everything I sold like went for an average of a buck. Not bad. 
So when you're, when you're, yeah, I mean, when you're, like uh, Jeremy said, it, that adds up. Like when you're going through cards, you're selling like four cards for a game and then like, you know, uh, 10 or 11 different Team Fortress 2 items. That's 15 bucks right there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe I need to get in on this, make some cash. <laughs> you got dollar signs in your eyes right now. <laughs> no. I can make money playing video games. <laughs> well, but the thing is, I don't think you can get it. I don't think you can get the money out of Steam. No, it stays it, in your wallet. So you it goes into your, it. yeah, it goes into your Steam wallet so you can use it for other Steam things. Uh-huh. But I don't think there's any way to cash out. That's all right. I don't Still think I useful. could have gotten that. Still yeah. useful. Yeah. Like I said, I got essentially two free games for totally free for playing other games. <laughs> so All right, yeah, cool. cool well, but uh, weird. But let's, cool. Let's get in on that while the getting's good. <laughs> All right, anything else? Nope. No? That's it for me. All right. Uh who would like to go next? Huh? Huh? Anybody? Any takers? <laughs> Anybody? Take sure. Take sure. Take sure. <laughs> sure. I think I think you're just going to have to pick from now on. Uh, Sharon, why don't you go ahead? <laughs> All right. Well, um, we talked a little bit last week about Humble Bundle 8. And um, so I opened up one of the games that is featured in that. And it was Thomas Was Alone. Aww. And um, Thomas Was Alone is a game that, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, released previously on, let me see, uh, Windows and Mac, I think, last year, and then it went to PlayStation Network and Vita this year, I think earlier in the spring, and I think it might also be on Linux. Um, anyway, it is a puzzle platformer, <laughs> and it is the most basic of all graphics. <laughs> I do not know what you mean. <laughs> it is essentially Thomas was alone is uh, squares, rectangles um, that you move around an environment that is also made up of squares and rectangles. <laughs> and uh, you use these basically each of these squares or rectangles is represented as a character, um, as a sentient sort of shape. And um, they ha- they each have a specific property. Like, for example, one can jump really high. Um, one is small, so it fits in smaller places. One of them can float. <clears throat> Excuse me. One of them is bouncy. And, and so, um, as you start to meet more and more of these quote unquote characters, you start to learn how to use them in conjunction with one another to solve the platform puzzle. Um, and they're all get from point A to point B type of puzzles. Um, I played in one sitting, I played about 60% of the game. Damn. Yeah. It's a, it's short. It's not a long game, <laughs> but it's cute and, um, it's not extremely difficult. So you'll feel kind of smart playing it. <laughs> What's it like? I noticed that in the first scene, at least on our cast here, that, that there's like text every once in a while. I guess the cubes are saying something. No, or? well, it's actually in a narrative. Okay. So, um, Sometimes the narrative is in, um, well, it's all, it's all sort of, I want to say third person, but I might be messing up my terms on that one. Um, no, no. Basically, basically, <laughs> basically it is a narrative from the point of view of somebody telling you about how each of the character, each of the shapes feels. So it's like, you know, Thomas was uncertain as to this other dude and how helpful he would be, but Thomas decided to try anyway, like that kind of a thing. Um, so when the text pops up, there is an actual narrator who's reading it and it's all written really well. It it sounds sort of like, uh, Bastion's narration. How it was kind of, you know, yeah, it is, it is narrating the story of what you're doing in the game at the moment. Sort of, but it also sort of gives you, like, it's, it's not as extensive as that narrator was. And, um, it's, it's written in a, in a less, um, uh, impending way. So it doesn't happen all throughout. It just happens when you see, like, if you're watching the video cast, when the text comes up at the beginning of each level or, um, section of level, um, basically the narrator is introducing you to the character 
um, or how the character should be used in conjunction with the other characters. So if you have a new character, it's telling you how one might feel about the other, and that gives you a clue wow. as to how they can use how, how they can be used together. It's a story of friendship. Kind friendship of. It's of like geometric blocks. I think one of the one of the points that stuck out to me was um, there's this one block, and he's irritated by everybody, and then he meets this long, flat, rectangular block, not unlike a Tetris block that's laid down on its side, and um, the Tetris block is is identified as a female and she's bouncy. So you, you, you jump on her in order to get to a oh higher point, my. right? And by the, by the end of, cause basically each stage has 10 levels. And by the end of that stage where you're introduced to these two characters and how they work together, the block is like, Oh yeah, she's my girlfriend. Wait, can I call her my girlfriend? Is it too soon? <laughs> no. You know, so it's cute in that way. Um, yeah. And it, it's, it's worth picking up, especially, you know, as part of the Humble Bundle where it was pretty cheap. <laughs> are there any, uh, are there any geometric puns? Like, does anyone ever say, man, that guy's such a square? Uh, not that I remember. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, there that are, would be amazing. <laughs> there are 10, there are 10 stages and 10 levels per stage. So you've got basically 100 levels. They fly by pretty quickly. God, this stage has spikes. My yeah, favorite. This is, uh, to be fair, this is close to the end of the game. Um, so spikes. Everyone loves stages. There's all spikes. sorts of different things. There's spikes. There's water. There's like acid and. Um, it, I mean, yeah, it is what it is. It's it's worth playing, but it's I probably wouldn't spend like twenty bucks on it. <laughs> To be honest. Well, it's part of the Humble Bundle, so you can spend $5.67 and yeah. get this game. So. It is. And if you're just in the mood to solve some puzzles, you will solve these puzzles quickly, and you'll feel good about it, and you'll it's lighthearted. And... Ugh, apparently until you get to the spike stage, and then you'll just be dying over and over and over again. <laughs> um, there is supposed to be a story with these characters, but I honestly wasn't paying too much attention to it. Um, it's something I, uh... <laughs> about these are pieces of a computer mainframe or something like that. So, yeah, they're they're like artificial intelligences yes. or something, yeah. gaining sentience. Yeah. Uh, I've I've been I've had my eye on this game since it came out. Mm -hmm. um, I I haven't played it yet. <laughs> It's definitely it's a fun way I haven't to played it yet either. <laughs> it's um, a fun way to spend an afternoon. It's not um it's not so frustrating that you're going to be like, "Oh, I can't finish this puzzle and then walk away from it and never come back." You it's not that feeling. It's that, "Oh, yay, this is fun." kind of a feeling. <laughs> yeah. If that makes sense. Um and I I got this on the the recent humble bundle also, so Yeah. I'm definitely going to have to to play this one. I think everybody bought the humble bundle here. Yeah. <laughs> It, it yeah. was a good one. Yeah, it was a good one. Pretty sure we all got it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, uh, that's that's what I played. I love that there's so many achievements through Steam attached to it, because there's achievements that happen when you get to certain points in the game, but there's also achievements that you can pick up in levels, and you'll see them. They're kind of like these little squares that are barely visible. And they're usually in a spot that you don't think you can get to pretty easily, but when you get it, you feel like amazing because it's like you just picked up this achievement. And you're like, yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of opportunity for achievements on that, which is great. <laughs> yeah, I I have not loaded this up yet, but uh, it looks like something I could probably play through in a couple hours. Yeah, it's worth it. It's it's worth that, if anything else. Um, I'm also continuing on with. Earthbound, so I kept playing some of that this week and spent quite a bit of time playing some Portal 2 this week. So it's been a puzzly week for me. Yeah. Would you like to share briefly your experiences with Earthbound the other night? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, Have you guys known she was screaming at me? <laughs> I wasn't screaming at you. You just happened to be around yes. when I was screaming at the game. Okay, here is here's my gripe right now. It took me a while to figure out where... Um, the girl was, I guess her name's Paula in, but I've changed all the names. So it took me a while to figure out where the hell Paula was. And I had been there and I didn't know what I had to do next to go and get her. Well, I figured out what I was supposed to do. And this is great for 
For so long, I had been wandering around the town, talking to everybody three times over, trying to figure out where the hell is she? What do I have to do? Finally, I set this course of action to do it. I go to save her, and as soon as I know what to do, there's enemies everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> it's like one thing happened, and all of a sudden the town was infested with, like, walking plants and mushrooms and people with blue faces, and I'm just like, guys, where were you ten minutes ago before I knew what to do? Because it's turned into this me getting to a certain point and going, okay, now I have to go back and, and save or refresh my life or life up or, mm. or whatever, and then trying to get a little bit further and then the same thing. And I just, I had to walk away because it was like a, getting ambushed by gangs of mushrooms. And I just, <laughs> I what, don't know. What you are describing is basically JRPG. <laughs> like, like, get a little farther, grind it out. Didn't make it? Go back and save. Try oh. again. Yep. <laughs> like what you what you just said and what you were very frustrated by, that is like normal gameplay. <laughs> I just don't understand why all of a sudden I figure out what to do and the game decides, hey, now that you know what to do, we're gonna fuck you up the ass. <laughs> like it's not there. <laughs> well, keep at it. Just wait until I'm not around. <laughs> <laughs> I had to quit for my own sanity because I know what to do. I just don't have the strength to get there. Hmm. I have to. Have to level up some more, I guess. All right. Well, <laughs> we'll check back with you again on Earthbound as long as you decide to keep moving forward. Or I will. Moving laterally, I guess. No, it'll be forward. <laughs> I just, yeah. I just, I got frustrated. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> uh, Jeremy, why don't you uh, tell us what you're playing? All right. So I want to start my little section uh, with a story here. Oh. Story, story time. Uh, <laughs> So, um, gather on the rug, everyone. <laughs> Yay! Make sure you show the pictures. Um, okay. <laughs> I used to be a big StarCraft player, uh, when it first came out. And I was even, uh, pretty, pretty into it when StarCraft 2 came out. Um, played it for a while. And then, as with most of those games, after a couple months, everybody gets really good and you lose every game. So, I got discouraged and I quit playing. Um, but I kind of kept, I guess, up with the whole scene, uh, following like, you know, my, my friend, uh, is still really into it. So I kind of, you know, have to keep up so I can talk the lingo with him. You gotta um, talk the talk and walk the walk. Yeah. So he calls me the, uh, last Sunday and he's like, Hey, you should come up to the bar with me and go to this barcraft thing. Bar Ooh. Are, are you familiar with this? Should I no, explain but this? Sound, yeah, explain. Okay, so Barcraft is pretty much, it was started pretty much by the community uh, maybe a year ago, a little bit more. Um, and what it is, is pretty much uh, somebody steps up and gets a hold of um, the bars in their area and says, hey, you know, can you stream, you know, the championship? games for starcraft on one of your tvs and you know eventually one bar will bite and then uh they'll kind of start like a community group and everybody that lives around that area that likes starcraft will go to the bar and watch starcraft that sounds awesome yeah. i so, think a bar would be dumb not to do that they yeah, all the yeah, potential exactly. customers so, yeah so I was kind of like, okay, I, I've been a part of this Barcraft group just because he invited me, and there's like 200 members or whatever, and so I was like, I don't know about this, man. This is like, I feel like this might be, you know, I walk into the bar, there's 10 people who are very awkward and don't want to talk to each other, and we're watching Starcraft <laughs> on a little 16-inch screen. Um, so he, he tells me where it is, and I'd been there before. It was like this bar that's uh, about 20 minutes from me, so... Uh, I had no idea that they did remodeling. So when I go in there, um, like you walk down, it's like in a basement, you walk down the stairs and like, first thing I see is there's just a mural of Pac-Man on the wall. Cool. Like graffiti, like it's all like, you know, new, new style graffiti and it's all crazy and blown out. And, uh, so there's that. And then I turn the corner and there's like a mural of, uh, an NES controller drinking a beer. <laughs> Man, I just really like the sound of this place. Yeah, me too. <laughs> a gaming bar and then uh, along the entire out outer wall of the bar 
There's pinball machines, uh, Donkey Kong, Simpsons, uh, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, all these old school arcade games at the bar. And they're all like 25 cents. Like it's really cheap. And it's you could brilliant. Do, yeah. So, and then there's, they have a huge bar and they have three uh, flat screen TVs. So I go in there thinking, you know, there's going to be like 10 people, like I said. And I go downstairs and there's like 50 people and they're all there for StarCraft. And they're all like having a good time, drinking beers, doing shots. And <laughs> all the TVs have like the, the streams on and everything. So I'm like, well, all right, it's okay. I, I have no idea what the hell's going on because I've been out of the loop for so long. Um, so I kind of just sat there and had a beer and kind of just, I guess, rediscovered StarCraft. Uh, so then, of course, after that was over, I got the itch <laughs> to play StarCraft again. <laughs> but the problem is I didn't, I didn't ever buy the uh, expansion Ooh. that they just used. So I stuck with the first one and everybody else has the expansion. So I'm like, man, do I really want to drop 40 bucks to, you know, play and then, I don't like it again. So I kind of was contemplating my mind doing it. And then, uh, I don't know if you guys, probably not, but they, uh, Blizzard released, um, this thing for StarCraft called Spawning, literally the day after this StarCraft. Um, and the yeah, spawning I... mechanic pretty much says if you group with someone that has the newest expansion, you get upgraded and are able to play that expansion as long as you're in their group. Oh, wow. So I, I didn't have to buy it. So me and my buddy, I would team up with him, and he has Heart of the Swarm, which is the expansion, and we could play together. Like, it's awesome. You That's just, great. You get automatic. Now, you can't play the uh, the single player because you have to be in a group, but you have access to the matchmaking, multiplayer, the, like, custom games, uh, the arcade games that are built in. Like, it's all accessible. So... I've been uh I've been playing a little StarCraft. I've been getting my ass kicked, but uh <laughs> it uh it has definitely kind of gotten me back into it simply because of the whole Barcraft thing. Well, for uh, sure. That's the way to get peer pressured real, into anything, really. <laughs> it, it, it was it really surprised me and it was good to see because like I don't want to overcast this umbrella here, but like everyone's like, "Oh, you know, technology is making us not sociable and all people do is sit behind their computers and no one talks to each other and interacts. And it was like, it was good to see like, like all these people who love video games and love Starcraft out socializing and having drinks and making friends. Yeah. The way That's life should be. Man, you know, gamers are some of the most social people out there. I don't know where that it, stereotype good, comes from. It was a good platform to kind of just like, come out let's have fun let's have some pizza let's play some games like yeah it's very awesome. cool there's gonna be one at the end of the month so i'm probably gonna probably gonna go to that one too so That's yeah a... back into the starcraft man <laughs> there's nothing i kind of i almost want to look into getting that going around here yeah no kidding i maybe i need man, a that new... would be cool. like, uh, I, I was thinking like you know you could do that for like dota has tournament leagues and yeah leagues. Legends has tournament leagues, and then you have like your first person shooter tournaments and Evo, and you have like all this stuff that has the potential to be able to do something like seven this. nights a week. Dude, there you go. <laughs> I would, I would so love an Evo bar party. Man, that would just be the best. <laughs> <laughs> Streaming fighting games up on the street on the screen instead of football or whatever. Yeah, Ain't and enough. it's. It's like a perfect bar. Like it's, <laughs> it's marketed as a like arcade. Like yeah, that's and, cool. And like so, it's, it's perfect. They, they they enjoyed our company and our business, so they invited us back. So you know, we'll be there uh, at the end of the month. So I'm probably gonna check that Very out again. Cool. Yeah. That um, I saw the news come through for that spawning thing, uh, and that's really cool because uh, uh, that you can actually do that also totally free. If you yeah. just download the free demo of StarCraft, oh, uh, you can you can also get your friends to join in, uh, and they can play all the current stuff totally free, uh, and that's rad because that's the way the old StarCraft was. That's the way we used to run StarCraft LAN parties back in the day. Was we just had like one or two actual installed discs, but if you installed the game you could play locally 
uh, right. with as many as many copies as you wanted. Yeah, just, that, like just multiplayer. You couldn't play the single player without the actual disc. But um, I think that's one of the reasons they did that. Like they said, you know, everybody loved spawning in StarCraft One, so we brought it back. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, it, it's a really cool feature. Well, it's super smart because if you like it enough, you're gonna you're gonna buy it. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's good marketing uh, ploy. Um, so I did that, and then I also bought the humble bundle, like we were talking about. Mm-hmm. Everybody in the universe, apparently. Yeah. 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 Well, once they added those extra games the other day, and it was like you get eleven games and ten soundtracks. Now I was like, dude, I gotta buy this thing. <laughs> like, this is a this is a tragedy if I don't buy this thing. So. Um, I started playing Intrusion Two. I just randomly picked a game out of the humble bundle. That was one of the. Played... That was one of the ones that got added in late, right? Yeah, yeah, that was the, one of the add ones. Um, so <laughs> I didn't really know what to expect. Uh, I'd never seen any videos or heard anything. So, uh, yeah, it's like a ragdoll platformer. It has ragdoll mechanics, so everything that you <laughs> you do, like has a i don't know like you kill an enemy and instead of just like falling on the ground dying he like flies across the screen and like (laughs) bodies all contorted and and weird and uh a lot of the things in the environment as well uh will bend to you know pushing them over jumping on top of them um like there's it it it's almost too much i want to say uh sometimes during the game like you'll he'll like fall down a bridge like a bridge will break and the sides of the bridge will like be like hanging off the cliff but if you want to walk under the bridge you have to like run into the bridge and push it away but sometimes like (laughs) the mechanics don't allow that like it will like push you back instead of pushing forward so like sometimes it gets in the way um not all the time but uh, as far as the game goes uh you get Various different guns. Um, that log up. was just on your head. Yeah, balancing <laughs> upright on your head. The the stuff in the world, the objects and stuff are like over the top. Like the boulders will, like if you push a boulder off a cliff, it'll fall into a tree, and then it'll fall on top of a bunch of guys' heads. And That's fun. Kill them all. Like it, so, it's it, yeah, it's pretty funny. Um, I didn't, I didn't really get too far into it. Um, Mainly because I already got frustrated with it. <laughs> can you can you tell me what the controls are like? It looks like um, you're aiming with the mouse. Yes, you aim yeah. with the mouse, and you switch positions like from front to back with the mouse. Uh, the mouse, and then you'll change your weapons with Q. And uh, I don't know if you can change the hotkeys. I didn't look at that, but you you would think spacebar would be jump, right? Mm-hmm. It's not. It's oh, W is jump. Like, oh, what? No. <laughs> the so, dreaded up as jump. Yeah, I don't know if you can change that or not. I didn't look into it, but that was one of the things that was like, oh my god, I, it sucks because like you'll want to be going, uh, you know, you want to jump up, but then <laughs> you just, I don't know, it's just a weird positioning. I've never had a game like that because I guess the space bar um, further along in the game, you'll get like suit upgrades that do crazy stuff and that's what spacebar does uh it's like a suit power up activation so i i is really the controller don't. enabled do we know that uh it is okay i i don't have a controller so yeah, it'll no, probably would... be easier with the controller but i was just yeah. curious <laughs> i wonder how the aiming works for the controller i would hope it's just like right analog but yeah i hope it um uh... I mean, as you see in the video, like, it's pretty straight, like, shooting. So if you yeah. just aim in any direction, it's going to hit. Um, the, one of the funny things is later on in the in this video, uh, I don't know if we'll get that far, but you get a – you get to ride on a wolf. <laughs> and the wolf, like <laughs> – I don't know. Like, it, it's like having, a, like, a superstar in, in mm-hmm. Mario. Oh like, my god, that is a big you, wolf. You, like you just run into things and it, it kills them. Like it just mangles them. <laughs> like do 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 And then like uh <laughs> there's another one. Like you just have multiple wolves and you just like well, I'm just like gonna climb this tower and <laughs> go after this, this is guy. So weird. It, it the ragdoll mechanics make the game like 
kind of like weird, like you said. It's just <laughs> like see, look at those guys go fly, and it's the uh... <laughs> kind of hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it it's almost, kind of fun though. It like seems intentionally <laughs> hilarious, like janky uh, in a good way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, what, is, what is that wolf doing? Is that <laughs> what is oh, he doing? If you don't know now, you never will. Well, and if and if you're listening to the podcast after the live stream, you definitely need to go back and check out the yeah. video. <laughs> wow, this game is crazy awesome. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's like a, oh, I got killed there, but yeah. So I don't know. I, I don't. I'm not a fan of the ragdoll mechanics, but. <laughs> game hilarious i guess like yeah, yeah i said, like so. i didn't get very far into it uh i probably will go back and see if there's any kind of neat things in store as, uh, as unintentionally hilarious as that is it probably is more frustrating than i give it credit for yeah like i i died uh, like six times in this first stage just due to like some of the controls being like not as fluid as i would hope mm-hmm. so like um You'll be like, like if I'm on this wolf, I'll run into an object and I'll get instantly slowed, and then a bunch of enemies will be able to shoot me for right. a couple seconds. So, mm-hmm. in that regard, it's kind of like, eh. But as far as just like you know, shooting, shooting platformer, it's all right. I mean, I can't, I can't complain. It's got cool little things like you know, breaking out of stuff with uh, clicking the mouse, and there's a lot of interaction uh, with the environment. So that's. It's not bad. It looks neat. I think I might try this out, since I apparently own it now. <laughs> if, you, if you get further than me, then let me know how it progresses, because I don't know if I'll finish this game. God. But I hope you get I, to ride a dragon later. I also uh, was going to install that one off the Humble Bundle. It's like tiny and big. Tiny and big, yeah. Overs, but like, it's like huge it's like a gig or something like i I didn't expect it i uh i meant to play it i just haven't gotten around to it my understanding is that it's actually a pretty short game oh but uh it also looks really neat it involves lasers so that's cool (laughs) i like lasers and cutting through stuff yes cutting through stuff with lasers so yes that is my adventures for this weekend you know i've been playing uh more star wild uh (laughs) The yet unannounced game like, of mysterious origin. Yes, uh, and I am pleased to say that it's coming along very nicely. Cool, hooked. So hopefully the, uh, the we'll we'll be able to actually talk about that soon. Yes, and uh, Star Wars. Um, all my friends don't like playing, so oh. I'm, just, I'm waiting for them to catch up to me. So Star Wars is on the hold. Okay. Uh, I didn't want to say anything because. Nick was going to make fun of me. Oh, I'm... no. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Never be afraid of Nick. <laughs> hey. Well. Fear me. <laughs> no. No, don't fear me. <laughs> All right. It's a, it's a loving jest, if anything. <laughs> so I guess that brings us to me. Huh? Yep. What have All you right. been playing? So uh, I've I've been... Playing a couple things, uh, nothing too crazy. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is uh, the same thing I talked about last week, which uh, if you guys remember, I was playing Dust last week. Um, I played it a lot more this week, like a lot more. Uh, I've often tooted how I am a completionist, so I was trying to get a 100% game. Uh, and my game save is currently at 110%. <laughs> Uh, so it's one of those games. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you ever had a yep. game that goes past? So um, I think I've broken this game. Like, I've straight up broken it. Uh, my character, if you can see, I'm I'm now level 50. Uh, and I can basically kill anything by just tornadoing through it. Uh, by doing literally, like, tens of thousands of damage. Uh, with, like, just electric blasts and diving and pushing back and forth on the directional pad like i've straight up broken this game uh um, i fun <laughs> i uh yeah my opinion of of dust has changed a little bit in the past week i still think it's a good game but um i i didn't break this game in the last phase like it wasn't one of those things where i got some amazing piece of armor and broke it like i broke it six hours ago in this 10 hour gameplay and okay. i've been basically doing the same techniques over and over and over again for the past six hours of gameplay. being invincible being invincible mm-hmm. like i've never died 
Uh, I've never had any problems. Uh, the most, the most fun I've had in this game is trying to figure out where all the items are, like going back and trying to 100% a Metroidvania game, which is, is never easy because you usually have to backtrack like all over the place just to get items that you couldn't get until the last moment. Um, a couple interesting things about this game. There, there's a double jump in this game, and unlike most Metroidvania games, which introduce the double jump almost immediately, uh, it is one of the last things you get in Dust. Uh, so when I got it, I was almost like, what? I can double jump now? But I'm like 90% done with the game. I'm, I'm going to the end boss, and you just gave me double jump. <laughs> so it was Weird. kind of kind of like strange in that, a little jarring. But it's good because mm-hmm. I love double jumping. So well, and it propelled you to move backwards in the game, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but um, especially if if you're watching the video feed, like you will you will see me do some absolutely insane things, just flying through the air, literally for like whole minutes, just taking on space cruisers and mm-hmm. and just like chaining together, killing five space cruisers all floating in the air at the same time without missing a beat. And I'm pretty sure the game was not meant to be this abused. Uh, <laughs> I know, I know, Nick. We were kind of conversing about it last week in the podcast, and you mentioned that the game was meant to be abused. I'm gonna go on record as saying, while I think you're right, I don't think it was meant to be abused as badly as I am abusing it. <laughs> um, after I recorded this video, I went on to finish the game. This is this this part I'm playing at is actually right before the last guy of the whole game. So uh, this is the hardest part of the game, and I am tearing it apart. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Again, like Sharon was making fun of the voice acting uh, oh. last week, and I think by the end of this week, I was too. Like, I just kind of I kind of soured on it after a while. This is just like, oh, you know, I'm sick of listening to you fidget. You don't sound Again, convincing. I don't think it's so much the voice acting for me personally as the, as the dialogue. But, you know, we talked about that last week, yeah. too, in that it's one guy who, you know, did everything. So yeah. some of it's a bit forgiven. Uh, like, I'll, <laughs> I'll go as far as to say the gameplay video, is, like, the gameplay artistry is fantastic. Oh, yeah. However, as I played games more and as, I guess you would say, an amateur animator... Uh, I actually ended up finding a lot of the animated cutscenes to end actually look kind of amateurish, which oh. surprised me. I, I was expecting a little bit more, um, and I didn't get that, and I was like, oh, well, okay. So I just kind of tore through this game. Really like the gameplay a lot. Wish there was more to it. I-, I guess maybe I should be playing this game on a harder skill level. I- Could be. I don't know, but like I've... I, I really like it, and I just its faults kind of show itself as you start to get more and more powerful. Like uh, last week, I mentioned that this dust has lots of other things like skill trees, and and there's a whole crafting system. But as I began to exploit the game, I started to realize just how shallow those systems are. Mm. Like the, the crafting is actually very basic, like very very basic, uh, and most of the items you can get just by just by buying the stuff from your local merchant, which was disappointing. I was kind of hoping there would be, like, rare things that you could find from killing enemies and then using those to craft ultimate items, and none of that stuff came to fruition. Hmm. Um, the skill the skill trees are basically non-existent. Um, I, I upgraded my little flying fidget character, the flying cat thing, so much that every time I use electric, it just kills absolutely everything <laughs> on the screen. Um so yeah, I how's mean, the uh, how's the story? Does it go in the satisfying directions? Yeah, yeah, I would say the story is okay. It's all right. Um, it definitely it seemed uh, very anime inspired. Yeah, yeah, for like better it, or worse. It starts off like right off from the beginning. There's there's sort of like this this genocide uh, storyline kind of going on. Yeah, uh, which I know sounds a bit hardcore, but uh, they they play around with it very lightly. You know, rated mm-hmm. E ten for everyone, um, but in in a way that what they're trying to do with Dust's actual character is also interesting. I I won't ruin any of that, but uh I mean it's it's good enough. Mm-hmm. I guess that's kind of what I'm trying to say. Uh, I wouldn't put it like in the top 10 pantheon of all-time stories or anything, especially cuz you're playing as a freaking an- anthropomorphic fox. But uh 
I mean, it's fine. It's passable. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I would recommend finishing it at the very least. Uh, I know, Nick, you said you got what you believe is halfway through. Yeah, I probably got about halfway through uh, and then haven't played it since it was originally out on the Xbox. Yeah, but then it's um, realistically, I, I got s- the PC version now, so I've been meaning okay. to start it back up. But I also don't know if I want to play the whole thing all over again. It's I mean, I spent a lot of time, more time than I probably should have just leveling up and collecting things. So most people could probably do this game in about five hours, but I'm like 12 hours in now. Here's the part where I chain a whole bunch of space cruisers together without touching the ground. (laughs) It's like it's just ridiculous. You weren't meant to kill those things in three shots, but I do. It's just I don't know. So, uh, again, good game, but. I guess it just got easier than I was expecting it to get. I killed the, I killed the last boss without getting hit, by the way. So, yeah, that's that's that. So let me talk about the one last other thing that uh, I've been, I guess you could say that I've been playing, but this is kind of weird. So this this actually uh, is related to my speedrun stuff. Uh, I joined. A, a tournament, uh, which is uh, basically a bunch of speedrunner people playing games that that are being assigned to them at the moment they are about to be played. So you have no idea what you're about to play right before you play it. And uh, all the games were chosen by the contestants of the tournament. So people have been trolling the tournament by choosing really weird-ass games. Uh, so yesterday I did my first round. I played some guy... Um, and we, you know, we got our game chosen, and as it turns out, the game was Bonk's Adventure. But it wasn't the Bonk's Adventure that everybody knows, which is the one for the Turbo Graphics. Uh, any Bonk's Bonk's Adventure people here on the podcast today? Any Turbo yeah, Graphics lovers? I've played Bonk's Adventure. Yeah. I've never had a Turbo Graphics, but yeah, I mean, it's it's a pretty decent game. Instead, the game we got to play was the Game Boy version. Which is in black and white. Oh, and boy. Very clunky. So, uh. What? I didn't even know there was a Game Boy version. <laughs> so yeah, Hudson, Hudson is the, the guys who made Bonk and he was originally, I believe, supposed to be, uh, more of a, like, mascot character for NEC and that whole Turbo Graphics scene. And it sort of worked at the time. But Hudson was, you know, their financial problems. They always have. I mean, they're not even in business anymore, if that oh, means anything to you. Poor Hudson uh, So they ported Bonk to, like, everything. I think there's actually a Nintendo version of Bonk, uh, if you look hard enough. So uh, I played this Game Boy version of Bonk's Adventure. Uh, it took me about 45 minutes to beat the whole game. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, and we streamed it here yeah. on this channel. So. We, yeah, we streamed it. Um, so there's actual commentary, and this has all been saved. This will be on our YouTube page later. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Bonk's freaking adventure. I mean, <laughs> what can I say about Bonk? He's lovable. He's got a big head. He eats meat. He's pretty much uh, the best character ever. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, I've I've played a lot of the Turbo Graphics version of, the, of Bonk, so I was very familiar with with the controls and everything. But uh, I would not classify the Game Boy version as the definitive Bonk's adventure experience. So uh, we those, won't. Uh, those yeah. cactuses are really getting down. Hey, man, <laughs> they are. They're, they're dancing it. hard. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, can't really recommend Bonk's Adventure too much, unfortunately. Uh, oh. If you play any Bonk's Adventure, play the one for the Turbo Graphics because that's the best one. So yeah. That's it. Uh, as this tournament goes on, as long as I continue to win games, I will continue to have streams of uh, my matches. So Here on this channel? <laughs> wow, you really like saying Question that, mark? Huh? Uh, no, yes, seriously. On, yes, on this channel. Okay, because that means that um, if you are here watching the live cast, then you should hit that follow button. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and if you or not, if you're listening to the podcast after the fact, then uh, look us up and add us to your follows so that you can see, you can be notified of future streams. Yeah, the one thing I can't promise is that the games that have been chosen for this particular uh, contest um, are not great. They're <laughs> they're all pretty going to be pretty crappy, I think. But sometimes so. that makes for fun watching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Needless to say, I was not expecting to play Bonk's Adventure for the Game Boy any time ever in my life. And, well, now I have. So, 
<laughs> that's pretty much all I have on that one. Uh, so yeah, that's all I've been playing. I've had other things going on. I know I say this every podcast, but, uh, uh, my gaming time recently has been, has been short. So, uh, I get in my gameplay while, when I can. And unfortunately, it ends up being Bonk's Adventure for the Game Boy. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Anyone, anyone got anything else they're playing before we shut this thing down for for a break? Nope. No? Nope. Hmm? All right, cool. Uh, why don't we take a little break? Uh, considering we're already an hour and twenty minutes in, Ooh. and uh, we'll come back and we'll we'll do like lightning round news. Oh, lightning round. Lightning round. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Double jeopardy. We probably need that's, a real lightning sound for that. That's, <laughs> right. What are you talking about? I'm like that, <laughs> that police academy that guy. I just made the best. <laughs> you are Michael <laughs> Winslow's <laughs> son. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. There's a storm coming in. <laughs> <laughs> Close the windows. Get in the basement. Tornadoes are coming. All right. Break time. Uh, <laughs> let's take a break. Uh, we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Guys, we're back after one false start. False but start. Five yard penalty. <laughs> Still first down. <laughs> uh, guys, it's time for the news. News. Non bagel related news. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, I think the one that was the most shocking, albeit shouldn't really have been that shocking because we knew it was coming, was the announcement this week that Solid Snake. Will be played by Kiefer Sutherland. Snake. 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 <laughs> I love it. Um, we the re- the reason why I say it shouldn't have been too shocking is because we all knew that um, David Hater. I'm going to say his name. Yeah, right, that's correct. Hader, um, was not going to be returning because um, they were looking for someone a little more famous to bring a uh, voice to Snake this time around. So we knew someone was coming along. It just this week was announced that that someone is Kiefer Sutherland. So how do you guys feel about this announcement? Get down now! <laughs> I, I like love it. Kiefer Sutherland. I think he's fantastic. Uh, so I'm cool with it. I uh, I also want to point out that nowhere has it said he's voicing Solid Snake. Okay, my bad. It says Snake, so... As we know, there's like 10 different snakes. This is true. So. This is true. That's true. <laughs> That's my bad. Hmm. Well, no, I didn't mean to correct you or anything. I just meant, you know. Semantic. That's an interesting thing to consider, considering Kojima mm-hmm. and he all of his... Covered sh- up. Just that he's, like he's actually the- liquid snake? <laughs> yeah, Kojima yeah, doing Kojima maybe. stuff to us. Yeah. Well, he's also really old in the 80s, so right. he's probably Big Boss. Oh, okay. Which which was I forget what Big Boss's snake name was. It's like Natural Snake or I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember. Snake. Ask so, me anything about <laughs> Metal Gear lore. <laughs> I actually I have a question based on lore, but it's not what you think. Do you think someone sat down with Keeper Sutherland and tried to explain all of Metal Gear to him? <laughs> <laughs> No. Like, all right, Kiefer, you better go get a snack or no. something because this this might take a while. <laughs> I think someone handed him a bunch of lines typed out neatly in a duo tang and said, "Read this." <laughs> <laughs> no, read so, it more like that. <laughs> wait, let me get this straight. This they were actually an artificial intelligence the whole time, <laughs> <laughs> and then it was all in a virtual. What? What's go? What? You want me to be in what? <laughs> More confusing than my show. Yeah. Yeah. I just, yeah. I don't know how you even begin to explain. Like, what would happen if if he said, but what's my motivation? 
<laughs> oh shit, that's a loaded question. Do you think he's one of those? <laughs> do you think he's one of those actors? Do you have a few hours? We'll go make some coffee. We'll talk about your motivation. <laughs> and then there was Meryl, who you know. Oh, God. <laughs> but yeah, so my first question to Nick when we both read this news uh, simultaneously was, do you think this opens the door for a Kiefer Sutherland E3 appearance? Sure. Do you think yeah. we'll see him at a press conference? No? I think so. I think so. So, I, I don't know about you like, guys. I've never I, I've never seen a whole lot of 24. So, for me, Kiefer Sutherland will always be the bully punk from Stand By Me. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, Which is probably, I mean, I I think my favorite role of his ever. He's just so scary. He's, like, he's uh, every bully you've ever known. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, he's so yeah. good in that movie. <laughs> and now he's got all tattoos and stuff. What did Kiefer Sutherland get tattoos? What was he thinking? I don't know. I, don't know. I only watched the first season of 24, and then I was kind of burnt out on that concept <laughs> so for me he's like he is um what's that? he's othello basically he's like <laughs> uh shakespearean or action figure like he's a movie Kiefer he's Sutherland, basically easy to learn but hard to master <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> i'm trying to find the name of the movie that uh sticks out the most to me it's like this action movie from the 90s i think it was he was in dark city which is one of my favorite oh, movies yeah. of all time yeah that's a good one mm-hmm. yep all right that's enough this is a video game podcast sorry keep your sutherland podcast. <laughs> but yeah so he's snake <laughs> maybe we should move on all right next news article go oh um <laughs> <laughs> well here's here's the one that um we forgot to talk about last week and i really wanted to but um you remember in the 80s <laughs> when there was a this this landfill site for really bad games like <coughs> E.T. <coughs> and well, other what game stuff? was that? E. I think you got something stuck e. in your throat e. there. <laughs> E.T. the extraterrestrial. Yeah, and a whole bunch of other, I think, Atari-related things. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're going to dig that shit up. It's mostly E.T. Yeah. They're gonna... least, as the There's story goes. Probably some Atari Pac-Man in there also. Could be, yeah. Which was say. also awful. Yeah. Yeah, and people are, are speculating that there might be prototypes of other consoles and things like that. But uh For for those who are not familiar with the legend, if you will, allow me to explain. Uh in nineteen eighty three, after Atari and ColecoVision and a whole bunch of other companies invested a shit ton of money in video games, the whole scene just crashed. Like it completely blew up, no one was buying video games. Um, until Nintendo came around like two years later and revitalized everything. Um, but the reason it crashed was oversaturation and mostly oversaturation of poorly developed games. Uh, E.T. is usually like the biggest scapegoat because the game was designed in, I believe, six weeks uh, by one guy and was released uh, during Christmas. Uh, more cartridges were made than Ataris were sold which still to this day makes absolutely no sense. Uh, and as you can probably see on the video cast, the game is awful. Just absolutely terrible. So uh, as the legend goes, when the uh, video game industry crashed in 83, Atari cut its losses by taking all the unsold ETs, which apparently was a lot, and <laughs> buried them all in the desert, uh, and then poured concrete over the top so no one would ever be able to dig it up. Uh, and now that legend is unfortunately in peril as someone is going to try and actually locate it. And my problem with this is if they find nothing and actually debunk the legend, then I'll never be able to tell the story again. Aww. And that I, I don't want that to happen. I like the legend. It's like you don't, you don't, like when Scooby Doo finds, <laughs> finds the dude with the mask in the, in the mansion. It's like, well, great, it was just Old Man Hubbard all along, but you just killed the legend of the minor 249er or whatever. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I, I like the story of the E.T. cartridges, and we're, we could lose that. 
Yeah. No. I'm actually with you on that. Like, I, I just don't, I mean, why? <laughs> Just, just leave it buried. There's no reason. For the record, those cartridges are not worth anything. <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of ET cartridges still floating yes. around. I know, I have one. Did, yeah. has any, has, I have like three. <laughs> <laughs> have, have any of you run across the, the, the why to this story? Like the, what is the catalyst for this? <laughs> for, for, out of curiosity. For digging I guess. it up, is it? Yeah. Probably. I don't know. I haven't run into the why. I'm just, I'm just curious. Because <laughs> Canadians are bored. Hey. <laughs> Be careful there. <laughs> yeah. So I'm kind of hoping they don't find anything. Well, no, wait. I'm sorry. I'm kind of hoping that they don't look at yeah. all. Well. At the very least, if they do find it all, then the legends will be true. So that's the best case scenario, is if they look, they actually find it all. Then put it in a museum. It belongs in a museum, as Indiana Jones would say. <laughs> but if they but if they look and they can't find anything, doesn't that indicate that maybe it's not where they think it is? Dun maybe, dun. Maybe the legend will never die. <laughs> and you can tell the story for years and years. And like years. El Dorado. <laughs> so yeah, that's the story of ET. Yeah. I'm glad I got to tell it because I like telling it. Next time I tell it, I want it to be around a campfire and we all need to be eating s'mores. Ooh, s'mores. And then they got buried in the desert. <laughs> For the record, E.T. is the scariest thing I ever saw when I was a kid. <laughs> it's terrifying. <laughs> all right. So um, this week, Xbox released a number of statements regarding the Xbox One and how it will address game sharing and its used game policy. Unfortunately, uh, among all those statements, it also l- did not clarify some of the definitions that were key to understanding what they were talking about. So what it sounds like, and I'll sort of just kind of gloss over it a little, and if you guys have a bit more to add, please do so. But what it sounds like is that Microsoft is saying, upon launch of the Xbox One, you will not be able to um, share or rent a game. It won't work on, on that console. And, um, that there will be a sharing system set up for people on your friends list. Um, but how that's going to work specifically is a, still a little bit unclear. I'm hoping that some of these details get clarified at E3 next week. Um, but, but yeah, so that's kind of a, to me, it's a nail in the coffin. I don't know. What do you guys think about this or what have you heard? explaining a bit of uh, this well first i think it might be a little too early to be declaring coffins <laughs> <laughs> well. um i wish i i think i speak for everyone when i say i wish there was just a page on xbox.com that just like had bullet points and said these are the facts don't listen to gawker.com <laughs> you know coming I mean? to that point because there's story of the xbox one is just all over the place and nobody knows what the hell they're talking about yeah, it's been so, a pretty major problem like I, everyone's I saying different shit. exists i hope so it's um, uh you know like between all the different twitter accounts and you know this guy said this and this guy said that and then we fired that guy and told the other guy <laughs> to shut up because they were totally wrong <laughs> but we don't have the actual facts so we can't um, well we can tell them to be quiet I actually do have a link that I'll put in the podcast post here of the bullet point list on xbox.com. Okay, good. <laughs> um, and it says, okay. It's like um, I asked for it or something. <laughs> it's here. You, it, there's a lot of bullet points to go over. Um, it talks about the fact that you can give your game to friends so you can share with your friends. Um, you can trade in and resell your disc based games. Um, and that they won't charge you a platform fee to retailers, publishers, or consumers, blah, 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 blah. Um, you can give your game to family members or people. I don't, let's see. Give your family access to your entire games yeah, library. That's anytime, completely anywhere. different. Yep. That's completely different from me giving. No, no, I understand. Like, hey, Jeremy, I'm going to mail you a Xbox One game so you can play it. And then you get it, and you're like, "Holy crap! I can't play it on my Xbox One." But from what I from what I understand, and you'll have to read this a bit more specifically, this link, um, you can give your game to someone else, but you completely transfer the license of that game to that other person. This is overly complicated. Yeah, digital rights at its best. 
probably not. So, like I said, they released how it's going to work, but it's still pretty convoluted. <laughs> I don't know, guys. Opinions? Anybody? I thought it was interesting that a lot of this stuff basically said, uh, yeah, we're going to leave it up to publishers to be the dicks on this. And then all the publishers said, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> So, no one, yeah. no one wants to, no one wants to be the fall guy. So it's like, it's really strange. It's like Xbox has set up, excuse me, a bunch of potentially really restrictive stuff. But then they also said all of this is optional and implemented by publishers. Mm -hmm. It says third party publishers may opt in or out of supporting game resale and may set up business terms or transfer fees with retailers. So, yeah. uh, you know. So, they said there there isn't going to be any platform fee, but that doesn't mean EA isn't going to charge you or right. retailers to to do that. I mean, EA might go to say, uh, game whatever that store is. I can never remember GameStop and say, you know, if you want to resell our game every time you resell it, it's twenty five buck fee or something. Yeah. Who knows? It's It sounds like everybody wants either a piece of the pie or a piece of control. And because of it, the consumers lose every time. It doesn't really matter who ends up being the fall guy. We lose. It's like that Aliens vs. Predator trailer. It's like, whoever wins, <laughs> we lose. <laughs> yeah, well... And this is not to dis, like, this is not to say that this is an Xbox only problem. Like, these are questions that Sony needs to answer too. Like, this yeah. is on both of those guys. I, I think we're just picking on Xbox because maybe so Microsoft's message was not as clear. Whereas Sony has basically said, we don't have a message yet, <laughs> which in a way is actually the better of the two ways to do it. Cause at least if you don't have a message yet, then it can't be misconstrued until you actually deliver it. They just need to right. make sure they deliver it a little bit clearer than the dudes at Microsoft. Maybe don't show up in like a t-shirt and a blazer. <laughs> actually have a guy show up in a suit and tie and go, here are the facts. Give me some facts. Bring back, you know, who's who can we bring uh, on stage for Sony? Who can Sony get? Jack, you know, whatever his name is. Jack, Jack who? Jack is it the, isn't the guy who does the Sony stuff in North America. It's named Jack. Jack I something. Don't even. Jack, yeah. Jack. yeah, Jack Trenton. Yeah, that's it. I guess. <laughs> you, you only like bring him? out you bring out the big guns if you have good news, right? You never bring out the big guns for bad news. I don't know. He came out and said some bad news when the. When the uh, network went down that time. Yeah, but that was different. That was an apology, <laughs> which in a way is good news. Like, if you think about it in a certain way, an apology is good news. Or at least you're trying to take bad news and make it good. I don't know. Now I'm just talking semantics, too. We're not actually getting anywhere with this. But next week is E3. This stuff's all all, all be cleared up, yeah. hopefully. For now, if you're a little, again, because I'm not very articulate on this particular issue, but if you would like to read the bullet point list on xbox.com, I will put the link in the post on www.fromthedpad.com. Go to our podcast episode 41 and look for that link. Cool. All right. Yeah. Let's see what happens. I mean, we just, we need to wait for next week. I'm sure we will pick up this topic next week uh, when we are all either seething or overjoyed. <laughs> <laughs> or both um let's see i i hesitated to put this next thing in because i hate layoff stories but um it seemed to dominate the the news this week the game news in that uh zynga has laid off a good what 18 percent of its workforce this week including the recently acquired omg pop who's um got bought out after the success of Draw Something, which people were playing on their phones for a long time. Um, but in addition to that, I think a total of, what was it? It was 18%, right, of their yeah, workforce. It was over 500 people got the can. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a pretty big deal <laughs> for the casual games market. Yeah. I... Nick, you've got stuff to add to this? I know you were talking about it earlier. It's, uh, it's unfortunate, but yeah, I mean, they... Those, those guys, Zynga bought these guys, oh my god, 
OMG Pop. I don't know how you pronounce it officially. <laughs> no, OMG do Pop. I. Oh my God, Pop. <laughs> um, <laughs> who made Draw something which was popular for like three months. Yeah. Uh, and as the story goes, apparently uh, Zynga bought them. Yep. And then those guys sat around in a room and did nothing for like <laughs> months and months and months because Zynga didn't have anything for them. And then they all got laid off. Uh, also, you know, the other 500 people got laid off. Also, would like to add 18% of Zynga is over 500 people. That means there's pro- there were probably 2,500 people working for Zynga making Farmville games. I have to, I have to say, I, as, as much as I feel really shitty about it for the, for the people who got acquired and then fired, and also for the people who just no longer have a job, who are probably, you know, hardworking so-and-sos, my stance on Zynga has always been less than great because they outright steal intellectual property and that kind of company um i don't know company practice really bothers me <laughs> yeah they're pretty shady but you know what can you do i mean they're they they make money but their business practices are questionable at best yeah so. but i still feel bad for the people who now are in the job market <laughs> yeah but now i they should can get uh, a good job <clears throat> it's also interesting to note um I, I remembered this story from a couple months ago, and uh, no one seems to be bringing it up in this context. But in April, uh, Zynga actually gave um, salaries and uh, bigger salaries and bonuses to all of their executives. <sighs> that makes total sense, right? Yep. See, as a company, I cannot. As a like company that practices business, I just uh, everything about it makes me shudder. But that's, I mean, that's business in America in, in 20, in the 20 teens. Oh, so wow. shady. And, and before that too. Hopefully all these people will find new jobs working for, uh, themselves in the indie market. <laughs> yeah. Or, I mean, also in, in, in a way, I don't know, maybe I've talked about my, I'm talking out of my ass on, on this, but, um, the OMG pop guy is actually kind of got a pretty good deal in a way cuz they were bought for a stupid ton of money. Yeah, yeah. Uh which I would assume they you know they still have and then they got to sit around and you know work on other games or chill out or whoever who knows what they did. Mm-hmm. Uh so in the end those guys are still up yeah. on the deal, really. Well, and hopefully now they can go work for a company that has a soul. Yeah. Well, the guys <laughs> yeah. from OMG Pop will now start a new company called WTF Pop <laughs> and, and develop Draw Something to Electric Boogaloo. Oh, maybe yeah. Pictionary uh, 3. No. <laughs> yeah. Use, maybe they can use some of that capital that they, they gained for to yeah start up another studio, work on their own stuff again. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure they're fine. I actually read somewhere that those guys uh, who got – let go from OMG Pop. They all partied directly after getting laid off. <laughs> uh, they were obviously broken up about it. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, there are people who did not come from that studio who were also let go. And, you know, time yeah. to find a company that respects other companies. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's all I got um, for Zynga. So yeah, casual games. I feel like we have Zynga on this podcast every other week. No, we don't. I just no. said it feels like it. Okay, so I'm hoping you guys can help me out with this next story a little bit, because um, it kind of came out of nowhere. This uh, State of Decay came out on Xbox Live Arcade, I want to say, and it sold like gangbusters. Um, within two days, I think it was $250,000, or 50 copies wow. of this game. Um, so this, this, this to me is surprising, because I, you know... I did. It was not on my radar. I feel like that's a lot for an Xbox Live game. I think. Um, I think that the people that enjoy these types of games are getting antsy, mm-hmm. and they wanted something to chew on because uh, Daisy is old now, and War Z was such a failure, and the new Daisy standalone has not come out. So they wanted some kind of zombie survival game, and yeah, that's a good. This point. game is uh, pretty promising. Uh, at least from what I've seen of it. Yeah. So, it, you know, something people are going to chew on for a little bit. 
think that's part of it. Yeah. I oh. can't also, believe... Uh, there are still 250,000 people on Xbox Live who want to consume content. I feel like that whole scene is dead. Obviously not. I think I, not, I think yeah. it's a great success story, but I'm I'm shocked. I'm, I, yeah, it's great. Zombies. It also feeds in a little bit to like I mean uh, like Minecraft is super crazy gigantic on mm-hmm. Xbox Live, and this isn't Minecraft, but it still fills that same. Um, ever-growing niche that isn't even a niche anymore of survival games. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, those kind of games are... This is... it. It's becoming really huge. I'm starting uh, so to believe that you can make a zombie game about anything and cash in. I don't know about that. There's certainly some I, shitty zombie games that I failed think, horribly. I think it's just the allure of, like, being able to do whatever you want and having yeah. in the back of your mind, you know, you have to survive those types of games people enjoy because they can freely walk around and do things, but they also know that they have to get X, Y, and Z done and survive to continue their character. So it's like, it's like a hardcore, you know, like a Diablo hardcore mentality where, you know, you want to, you want your character to progress, but if you die, you die, but you can pretty much do whatever you want in the game to to ensure your survival. I think I mean, that's popular. survival games like this just they, I mean they tap into some really just super basic urges. I mean survival is what uh life does. Not to get too philosophical here, but you know oh, like God, that is philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is the whole purpose of anything that is alive is to survive. So God, you know I feel it, like I mean graduate school it's a <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a really powerful thing, you know. Um and I I think that uh you know, like I said it just taps into a lot of stuff that is universal. Uh whether you like zombies or even video games, surviving is something that everyone still has. It's not something that we have to do a whole lot in modern society for most people. Um but, uh, well, I guess I shouldn't say most people, but <laughs> a lot of people, uh, the people buying video games, certainly. Uh, and so it, it sort of fills that stuff that we still have those urges to do, if that makes sense. I, I guess don't know. it's good practice for when the actual zombie apocalypse occurs and be like, I remember what to do from when I played State of Decay. I'll climb <laughs> the radio tower, check out the zombie <laughs> hordes, and then I'll get in my pickup truck and drive away. It's, uh, I don't know. It's, it's an interesting thing to immerse yourself in. And, uh, it's obviously popular. So I, I really not surprised it did so well. And I mean, it, from what it, I've seen so far, like the gameplay that we're watching now, it's, it's not bad. Like, I understand it's got some jank. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like it could have some jank. <laughs> the, um, undead, undead labs. Studio, I think, is the name of the company that did this game, and um, they put out a uh, like an official thank you to everybody who bought it, saying, you know, we didn't have we didn't have a budget to advertise for this game, and we didn't have money to to really put into the non game part of it, and that they were thanking all of the fans and people who bought it for making it a success, and so it obviously kind of hit home for them. Um, and well, I, sorry, I. Uh, I'm totally going to be buying this game when it comes out on PC. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, there's no there's no official date on uh, when it'll come to Windows. Just that it's to be announced. Yeah. So. Yeah. Cool. Zombies. People <laughs> like zombies. It's that simple. People like zombies. Well, well I don't it, think it's that it's, simple. <laughs> it's not. The, it's not the zombies though. It's the survival. The zombies yeah. just provide a context for that survival. Yeah, there's, well, plenty, of, there's plenty of zombie games out there that to, to have defend, not sold 250,000 copies of the game. To defend Nick's statement, though, like it is a it shows, is a like, genre now. Yeah, it's a popular like, context. Uh, yes. Yeah. How's how's that? Does, does that sound correct? <laughs> Sh- sure. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it it does seem to have come into its own genre. Like there is so many games that use that plot device. That it's hard to ignore. <laughs> All right. 
What else we got? Um, well, just this last story, which is that the Humble Bundle 8 that we were talking about hit the $2 million barrier, which I said. And I'm going to give away a code for a game from the bundle. Woo! Um, and let me just have a look quickly here. We don't really have um, a lot of people in the chat room right now, so instead of typing it in, I'm just going to read the letters out. <laughs> okay. Letters and numbers. Um, here we go. <clears throat> Remember, folks, Z means Z. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, this is a Steam code copy for Little Inferno. So, if you want this, take these letters and numbers and go punch them into Steam. See if it's already taken. If it's not, it's yours. That game is great, by the way. Uh, K-G-7-3-J-R-I-E-X-9-J-G-G-B-9. V. <laughs> and that's it. That's the whole thing. Wow. So if you if you if you wrote it all down, go punch it into Steam and if it's not taken, it's yours. It's like the combination of my luggage. And no, it's not. I like and, that. Um, I like a GG was in there. If you are uh interested in more things like this happening, we're gonna try and do a little bit more of this uh in the live cast. So your best chance obviously is to join us live Saturdays at two PM Eastern on twitch.tv slash from the d-pad and if you are a person who is developing games or has a game that you would like people to see or try out or or whatnot and you want us to give away a copy to your game then feel free to email me sharon at from the d-pad if you have a game or product or something that you'd like our people to win cool mm -hmm. yay video games you know what we uh we totally didn't do new releases oops it's all right because I got new releases up right here. We're going to do some new releases now. So, uh, Animal Crossing. Animal is, Crossing. Animal Crossing is coming out. You know how Animal I know? Crossing. Because my, <laughs> my 3DS keeps sending me messages every day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, have you checked out the new Animal Crossing? <laughs> hey, guys. You're going to get Animal Crossing, right? Uh, it's all about the oh. fruit. Oh, come on. I have I, some fruit. I've, never, I I've never been interested in those games. I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, utterly addictive. You can't explain it. You can't explain it. Yeah, they're just yeah. There's something about Animal Crossing that's yeah. Maybe it's just Tom Nook. Like this, the first time he says, "Hey, you owe me a million dollars," you're <laughs> like, "Oh, well, that that fucker's going down." And <laughs> that's the attachment I have to Animal Crossing is to stick it to Tom Nook. But even them bells are. <laughs> yes. Tapping your kneecaps. <laughs> Wait, it wasn't you know, breaking your knee. There, there, whatever. And you try. I would not be a very good mo mobster. Can I get one over on Tom Nook and change the system clock? And then that doesn't work. Yeah, Animal Crossing is pretty cool. Uh, go get, go get and some that, oranges. I'll trade oranges for apples, and uh, we'll all be friends. The uh, the 3ds really seems to be like the platform for this, even more than the the old DS version. It seems, uh, yeah, it's the first like fully equipped online Nintendo console. Yeah, full, full, well, like equipped. the Wii version had online, but the fact that it's online and portable is a pretty powerful combo. Yeah, uh, I, like I, I can agree. just I can bring that. I'm gonna man, that's my DS can be in my pocket everywhere. I'm gonna be busted it open, and people will be like, "What are you doing?" I'll be like. I gotta get my fossils. <laughs> I gotta pull up all these weeds. You don't understand. <laughs> uh, a couple other releases here. Uh, Sim City port to Mac. In case you haven't heard of that game, uh, came out a couple months ago. We we all loved it. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> so uh, yeah, if you haven't heard about Did how we? awesome Sim City is, <laughs> it's now coming out for Mac. I remember that differently. <laughs> <laughs> Alternate universe, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, I really wanted to love it even after everybody hated it. Yeah. Yeah, it's not good. I tried. Don't be that one guy. It's uh, not good, and now it's out for Mac, so. Yeah, I'm gonna say if you got a Mac, uh, and you were looking forward to that, I'm, I just, I'm sorry. Just don't, don't buy it. Don't do it. Don't buy it. It's not the SimCity you want. I guarantee. Yeah. I don't think they've ever ported any of the other SimCities to Mac. SimCity 4, maybe? No, well, I, maybe. I think they totally have. 
Yeah, you're yeah, probably right. I think right. all the SimCity is run back. You're probably right. Stick to SimCity 4. Yeah. Uh, guys, The Last of Us is coming out next week, finally. Oh, yeah, that's right. Finally. Uh, everyone seems to really love it. And it goes back to the conversation we had earlier about survival. Yeah. And uh, that one, I don't think, has zombies in it. Uh, they're some. They're just mushrooms on them. <laughs> they're, they're like, uh, you know, same thing. How Resident Evil Five didn't really have zombies, oh, gotcha. right? But man, even know, Naughty they're... Dog can't get away from zombies. <laughs> yeah, it's popular. Popular. So, I'm gonna be the asshole here and say I have absolutely no interest whatsoever in that game. Um, I don't think you're being an asshole. I think. I generally did not have any interest in the Uncharted series, and because yeah. of that, maybe I don't uh, revere Naughty Dog, and that's yeah. not necessarily because they don't deserve it, but just I never got into that scene, <clears throat> so my my interest in The Last of Us is related to that non-interest in Uncharted, but I, and I will go on record as saying that is not fair to them, and the game does actually look pretty good. I feel completely the same way, though. I am not a Naughty Dog fan. Like, I didn't like Uncharted, and that made me not like what Naughty Dog was doing. And therefore, that's part of the reason why I didn't bother with Tomb Raider, even though it looks great. Mm. And everything I hear about that is great. Maybe but... maybe we're all just horrible. Tomb Raider's people. better than Uncharted. Yeah. Mm. Um. Yeah, I'm going to go... I'm going to com- continue being an asshole, and I'm going to say the Uncharted games were... I don't. I don't think those games are going to hold up. I think they were very much uh, a game for their time. In five, ten years, I don't think people are going to be. People will be fondly remembering it, but they, they'll probably pick it up and go, "Jesus, what the hell was I thinking?" <laughs> Just like now, if people try to play GoldenEye 007. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I still fondly remember Dark Angel Vampire Apocalypse for PS2. <laughs> <laughs> Which we'll have to stream sometime just but, for laughs. But everything I hear about The Last of Us is good. People who love it or people who like it love it. And I haven't heard a lot of the contrary, so it seems it just seems really mired in all of the stuff that is really just getting me down about major triple A games. Mm. Like I just don't I'm all the stuff that, that got me down about Metro. Like right. just having all these mechanics in here for it's like, yeah, okay, you got regenerating health because that's what video games are now. It's just so, so much of these games are just so perfunctory. They're just there because that's what you do. Uh, and they don't seem to be solving any real problems. And, ah, uh, man. All right. Well, that, <laughs> that will be the end of my crabby old man rant. <laughs> um, Let's see, what else? There's really nothing else major coming out. Uh, if you like Contra, the Contra PS2 game, Shattered Soldier, is coming out on the PSN, which is a really hard Contra game. I love it. Uh, beyond that, not much else coming out. The rest of it is all just like, you don't know Jack is coming out on the Ouya. So, hey Ooh, guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got that, uh, <laughs> that... I downloaded that for my phone, and I actually love it. Oh, yeah, it's a great <laughs> oh, yeah. game. But... I don't know. Is is the Ouya out? Uh, 15th, I think. Oh, no. It's for early early adapters, it's out. But, uh, yeah, I think somewhere around June 15th. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, guys. That's the new releases for for this week. Uh, Kind of a rough week because E3 is next week. Mm -hmm. Everybody rest up and get ready for a six hour podcast next week. Oh, man. I don't know that it's going to be that long. We may or may not try to stream some of it again this year. Um, last year we did stream as much of E3 as we could, but uh, we'll see. Keep your eye on our Twitch channel for anything coming up related to that. Yeah, we'll do what we can. And uh, that's that's it. That's it. That's our podcast for the day. <clears throat> it's uh, It was a long one. <laughs> it was. So, uh, Sharon, why yes. tell us about the website? Um, before I do that, uh, I just have a bit of website news. Of course, our website is from the dpad.com where you can go and see all the archives of the podcasts or listen to the archives of the podcasts and read some back articles and keep your eye on for new content. Um, in that vein, we are going to 
bid farewell and good luck to uh, Josh, who was in training to be our managing editor, and he's been a contributing editor for about a year. He's moved on, so thanks for all your hard work. Thanks, Josh. Um, yep. And um, you can go to our website where you can read all the stuff that Jeremy posts. You can see some of the featured stuff from uh, other Nick, <laughs> as well as <laughs> Nick and myself. And uh, you'll find us on Twitch, on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, on Google+. And we want to say thanks again to uh, Jeremy and Nick for joining us. And um, please feel free to tell us about some of the stuff that you do and where people can find your stuff currently. Uh, you can find my stuff uh, at p1lp2.com, where uh, I share a bunch of videos from with... Uh, of. Uh, I share video games that I've been playing uh, with my uh, longtime partner uh, Matt, and uh, and and with you, the viewers. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> uh, as for me, uh, Sharon said, you know, you can find my stuff on the from the dpad dot com, but uh, I also have a a personal Twitch page. It's uh, under or r underscore n underscore g. Uh, I have some old videos there and some new stuff, uh, some games that you might want to check out. So you can uh, hit me up there. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, hopefully our Twitch page will be crazy filled up with E3 stuff this week. Mm -hmm. uh, if not, I will continue to be racing really weird shit <laughs> at random <laughs> intervals this week. Uh, um, I previous, previously I had been racing on a different channel, but I'm moving all of my racing to from the D-pad from now on. Hooray! So, uh, I will be racing and sending those videos to the site and hopefully writing up little, little, uh, vignettes about those races, just bringing all that stuff to the site. And I, and I should add too that if, if you're a game enthusiast, if you're someone who is really passionate about video games and you like to write, you know, little reviews or articles or things like that, and you're interested in becoming part of the team, um, feel free to email me, Sharon at from the com, and we'll have a little discussion about what we're looking for and how our site is planning to expand and whether or not you're interested in being a part of that. Yes, we pay in bagels. <laughs> we don't pay in bagels. <laughs> we, we pay in <laughs> gratitude, <laughs> enthusiasm, and when we can, codes for games. <laughs> Do those bagels come with schmear? <laughs> Of course. I mean, that's it's a that's deal breaker for me. <laughs> I don't know if I can be on this podcast anymore. Oh. Without, uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love you guys. I love you on this podcast. Guys, well, we're glad to have you both. Any parting comments before I shut this down? See you at E3? No, we're <laughs> no, we won't be at E3. See you in the D pad. Yeah, video games are pretty great. Yeah, yeah. That's two my hour two comment. hour podcast. There you I'll go go play some. Yeah. All right, cool. Let's go play some video games. Uh, right. That's going to do it for this uh, podcast. We'll be back uh, next weekend, 2 p.m. Eastern time on twitch.tv slash from the D-pad. Till then, we will see you later. Uh, have a great weekend and enjoy E3. Thank you very much.